Today's topic is the acceptance of one's own obese body. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, there were a lot of larger women and their admirers who were pushing for fat acceptance. Many of these women were doing it because they were either looking for a man with higher sexual marketplace value than themselves, or they wanted to make a lot of money off of other larger women because they saw there was a market for big Bertha clothing like bright and colorful camouflage dresses. I can only describe this as the fat acceptance apocalypse. There was an article in the New York Times Magazine recently. It was written by a woman who had had a child and she explained that her body is just as beautiful as it ever was, but also described how she felt when she saw herself in the mirror after having given birth. It's easy to see who stands to gain the most from this trend. Large agricultural businesses, clothing companies that can charge more for specialty food-inspired clothing, and of course the healthcare industry in places like the United States because larger people tend to die a lot sooner than the skinny ones. However, if you come right out and say that, the larger women will say that joggers and marathon runners die too, some as young as their early 20s and not being overweight is also a contributing factor. Others will say that no, it's because they are not running around out in the hot sun without any protection. And the older women will argue with them and say that everyone dies sooner or later, so they might as well die while they're active and not sedentary. This is a perfect example of where I used to be. It doesn't matter in the US because the hospitals seem to make more money from lardass classes and big handsome men who often get forklifted through the loading dock in the back. It's all about facts versus feelings. Fact, gravity puts pressure on your joints, so the more you wave, the faster your cartilage moves. Fact, the bigger you are, the harder your heart has to work to get oxygen to all that extra flesh, so your heart beats faster. Your heart is an important organ, and if it doesn't have enough oxygen to function properly, you'll get chest pain. So, your doctor might suggest a pacemaker to give your heart a boost. It reminded me of when I was a teenager and went to communist state stores in the former Yugoslavia. The shelves were empty, and the only things left were ugly things that no one wanted to buy. The shelves were half empty, and they couldn't even order things for those stores to sell. But that's a different topic. The problem with a society full of overweight women is that they put a lot of pressure on the healthcare system. This is the start of the first wave of the fat acceptance movement. In 1973, a feminist group called the Fat Underground was formed. Its founders, Sarah Fisher and Judy Free Spirit, fought back against what they saw as a growing bias against obese people in the scientific community. In 1979, they came up with the phrase, a diet is a cure that doesn't work for a disease that doesn't exist. Carol Shaw came up with the term, big beautiful woman, Bibidovi, and started a fashion and lifestyle magazine for fat women to read while they were sitting on the toilet and trying to keep their balance. In the 1980s, activist groups were also formed in England. This was pretty much the end of the first wave. The second wave began in the 1990s, gained social acceptance in the US, and then spread to other countries. The third wave started in the 2000s when activists started saying that men abuse fat women because of their weight. What's next? Are they going to say that gravity is oppressing them? The fat acceptance movement is about 10 to 20 years behind feminism, and it seems to be based on the successes of feminism. Also, many feminists are thought of themselves, so it's a perfect fit. According to an article from Bite Barn called Fat Studies, the latest grievance course for campus crazies. The University of Maryland now offers a course called Fat Studies. The course description says that the introduction of fat studies will not treat fatness as a social or medical problem, and that, instead, the course will look at fatness as a part of human diversity experience and experience. Next, our society will stop seeing bestiality and maybe even cannibalism as unhealthy mental or physical problems and instead see them as a way to show who we are. In my opinion, the fat acceptance movement is nothing more than feminism, dressed up in a parachute or a moo-moo. At the next Battle of Berkeley or Campus Riot, the left should just put the overweight women up front and throw some Twinkies at their opponents and watch the stampede. This is what it's really about, a society that gives power to people who are seen as victims. I don't know who their victims were, 
they're the ones eating more Harishi's kisses than they should. Overweight women seem to want to be seen as victims of discrimination, while also being treated as equals in the dating market. They are spreading the idea that laziness is now a virtue because they can't control their eating managers. They also want to be treated as special and be given special privileges. I saw this the last time I went clubbing. Muscular men are getting skinny and skinny women are getting fat. That's it for today. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all in the next video.